the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Amen. Hey, you know, I, I, that was a good segment. I, I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and continue. I break those up and break them down, bring them up in uh, segments anyway. But, I, you know, what I was getting out of that, and I just want to share with you guys a little bit more, is the fact is that we, we have blinded ourselves to just keep the gospel restricted in the walls and to those who are just uh how would you say in tune with want to go ahead and study the word talk the word outside of the of the four, four walls of the building are we are we not trying to share the word of god in our homes between our spouses with our children, while we're raised, especially while we're raising them up, do we want to at least pour some of the scriptures into their, really, it's not just, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's not just reading the scriptures, but pouring the revelation and understanding of the scriptures. And the fact is that all of us really supposed to, we supposed to live the scripture. You know, the Bible said that the just shall live by faith. For we walk by faith and not by sight, right? So if we're walking by faith, that I means we're walking by the word. Therefore, we don't, you know, when we go to church and then when we go home or go back to our neighborhood or go back to our jobs, does, does that mean game is on now or if you stop thinking about God. You start thinking about the Word of God. You start thinking about Jesus. You start thinking about lead, being led by the Holy Spirit. As if you're, you're not being led by the Holy Spirit at your home, at your job. You know, in the day-to-day -day walk in this world. See, and I think what the enemy has done effectively is the fact is that we have translated these things to be Bible thumping. Opposed to just fellowshipping with one another continuously. In other words, the Holy Spirit said, I'll never leave you. Let me get off this side. I'm sorry, I'm on this slide here. It said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But how many times are we more uh, restricting ourselves to concerning the things of God? I remember one time going to a, or had a, a cookout, right? And, and was playing gospel music. And, and some of the people that, that showed up, they were like, why is he playing this gospel music for? What? Where's the rest of the music where we can do the electric slide and all that? And it's not to say that that was wrong. Don't, don't get me wrong. You, 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 you should uh, be able to look at, the, should be able to focus on other things and activities uh, from <laughs> doing electric slide, watching a football game or basketball game or tennis or or watching a different movie and so forth we that it's not to say that those things uh are excluded because and i think that's where the problem is instead of incorporating those things as part of our life why can't you sit there and, and say lord help this guy catch this ball in a football game lord i pray lord give that man wisdom and, and guide him and gift him to make that shot Lord, that, that's a good movie. And I, I, I like to find out what, what biblical truth do I get from that movie, from that play. In other words, why can't we incorporate the things of, of life with the word of God so that we keep a spiritual way of thinking? Why, do we, why can't we discuss uh, the word of God with our children, between our spouses? Why, why, why? I can see with somebody. I remember one of the preachers at Pastor Dollar. He was talking about the fact is that he was praying with his wife, and and he just he just couldn't couldn't concentrate because he he he, he didn't uh, he felt like it was too too loud or whatever, and just felt that it was just 
it was just outside of the uh, uh, the way he liked to pray. So they start praying together. I guess maybe they pray together now, but I'm just saying it's, it's more of a uh, initial when the early late stages of life. And what I'm saying is that we 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 want to confine the word of God to the building. And we sometimes I think one of the things is is it is it the actual words or the spiritual tent behind the words so that we can at least share the word in our everyday life. Or the fact is that we want to we feel that we can't talk about things that contrary to the word of God, contrary to the fruits of the spirit. Are we, you know what I'm saying is in our business, do we have to uh, divorce or separate the things of God or the ways of God, the spiritual intent behind the things of God? You know, and, and we said in the businesses, we talk about integrity, right? We're talking about uh, when we get people in better business and give them a gold star, five stars or whatever, we're saying is that this person is operating at a level of proficiency that we won't recognize them. Why can't we, or why shouldn't we, and why don't we operate at the level of proficiency in living life and demonstrating that to people, and then when it's and if the conversation comes up to say, the Lord bless me with this and that. The Lord opened opportunities for me with this and that. The fact is, the saying is, it is a blessing to walk in the, the anointing of God in my life, day to day life. See, cause you know, when we come to the sickness, do we, do we want to incorporate Christ, God, the Holy Spirit into that situation? So that, you know, I was talking to myself the other day and said is, if you don't go, I don't want to go. Because if I go by myself, I don't have hope. If it's just based on the people instead of you. See, my hope relies rests in him. How he wants to do it, whether he wants to do it through a doctor, or do it through a lawyer, do it through, you know, through your job or do whatever, it's still my hope, my expectation is coming through him. Do we separate? Why do we have to separate fellowshipping with our loved ones in the things of God? Why has that got to be separate? It does not have to be separate. You can be, that's who you are. Be a Christian. Be able to sit there and say, you know, God bless you. And the person said, well, I don't, I don't want to hear it. I, I did, I've seen that one time, many times. I've seen a job, she said, you need to tell me I'm blessed. I know I'm blessed. But God bless you then, that's good. That you know you're blessed. I, I really appreciate that. That's a, that's a blessing to know that you know that you're blessed, amen? You know, and uh, God bless you. <laughs> God, hey, look, may I should tell you, God continue to bless you. How's that? You know what I mean? And we're talking in the study how how sometimes we will adapt to the environment that we're in to determine what we say about the things of God, about the kingdom of God. Because you know, the enemy does not want us to talk about. The, the things of the word of God. He wants us to keep it in, you know, I think he just is happy long to keep it in the four walls. And like we said before, you might ask yourself when you see this video, what did y'all talk about Sunday? Because if it didn't stick with you, what value did it have? If it's not equipping you, what value does it have? You checking the box that you went to church or that you heard, learned, and regurgitated what you have been fed concerning the word of God. 
In other words, I'm saying this is a lifestyle to be spiritually minded. This is a lifestyle to be spiritually minded. So I want you to understand that it's, it's, we, I think we have been very successful in separating the kingdom of God, the spiritual minded, from the life that we live in the world. Because we're so deep in thinking that we can't incorporate, we can't sit and say, hey man, how you doing? Man, you know, in other words, we think that we got to do it like, like, like the phoniness sometimes we see in, 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 in ministry. Well, we think we're we supposed to, supposed to just, just always speak like some kind of monk, monk or something, or some kind of preacher, right? Or, or, or being so, we don't, we don't make it, our, we don't make living this word as part of our life. And yet that's what we are. That's what we are, you know? So um, just pick this up again real quick. When I did these scriptures that we showed, and because and, uh, this, is, this is a new segment, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start off again uh, just to, to make sure that when they read, when they go into this segment, this this segment here, we, we, we're going to use the, the scriptures. And I, I just want to encourage people, though, is don't just confine the things of God, the spiritual mindedness of, of yourself in a church building only. You, you're supposed to be spiritually minded all the time. But it, 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 see, we make it a religion. It's totally for the fact that no, I'm just having to be mindful of the things of God as well as the things of man. We don't have to be mindful of the things of man and not incorporate God with us as being part of who we are, part of our job, part of our marriage, part of our raising our children, part of life. It don't have to be separated. We don't have to be, stop trying to make it religious. See, it's not, it's a way of life. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. It's, it's a way of life. You don't have to quote scriptures, but you can talk about what the essence of the spirit and the intent behind the scriptures. That's why I've been talking about the fruits of the spirit, found in Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Now, the, 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 the works of the spirit, right? The Holy Spirit is the fact is that uh, we're supposed to be able to operate in love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. This is, this is who we are. This is what we apply in our life. You apply the love of God. Don't mean to be a sucker, but it just means I just love you. I don't want to hate you, right? Uh, apply the, the peace that surpasses all understanding, meaning God is going to get us through this. And, and patient, long-suffering, being able to, to, to have tolerance toward other people. You know, it's, 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 it's applying these characteristics. It's being spiritually for the work, for the, for the fruit of the spirit, right? Look at that. It's the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit in, in Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Let me put it up there for you. Let me get it up first. Is the fruits of the spirit. We want to, we want to make sure that we bear the characteristics of the fruits of the spirit in our life. That's being spiritually minded. That's where, that's where it makes a big difference concerning who we are. If we operate in the spirit of God, you know what I mean. If we we we, we got to get to the point where what we do is to live this world, this life, spiritually minded, right? I mean, I'm gonna bring that, let's go to Galatians. I'm gonna go to Galatians 5. I'm gonna go to Galatians 5, 22. And I'm 
bring it up first before I transfer. But I'm saying is, we want to be spiritually minded. And that's not being religious. See, religious has folded us and make us sit there and think that this is how we're supposed to, when we're trying to be spiritual. And the reason we can't incorporate these things in our everyday lives, our jobs, because we can't sit there and be Bible something. And nobody, as we ask you to be, we ask you to, to let these characteristics of the fruits of the Spirit be manifest in your life. In your life, look at this. It says in Galatians 5, 22 23, but the fruit of the Spirit. What Spirit? We're talking about the Holy Spirit. We're talking about the day of Pentecost and the Holy Spirit came, the fruit of the Spirit. And when I make these slides, I'll make them, I'll put them on this so you can see them. But maybe you can see them now live. But I, I'll go ahead and put them on a the slide when I make a video recording of it. But it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there is no law. So I'm saying is when we operate in life at our jobs and our homes, let's bear the fruits of the Spirit of love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there is no law. See, no, you want to operate in love to your family. You want to operate in love to your fellow man, the people at your job, your neighbors, and so forth. You just want to operate in love. Love is 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 not is 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 not is the Bible basically said is treat others as you have others treat you. Love yourself. If you love yourself, then you know that you don't want yourself to be abused or put down or manipulated. Well, don't do that to other people. You don't, you don't want to be murdered, so you don't want to murder nobody else either. You, you, you see I'm coming from? Being spiritually minded is not the Bible thumping. It's the living and being mindful of the things of the Spirit, to incorporate the Spirit in your life. I like one part about that when talking about faith. Uh, it's, a, it's to operate by faith and not by sight, not by your senses. It's to be faithful in the things that you're supposed to do. Faithful to the, 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 the work schedule, the, the assignments given to you, to do them with excellence because that's who you are. That's all God is asking you to do, but it's the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. And I like the fact in verse 24, and they that in Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts that comes along with the flesh. If we live where? Look at it. Live. Live in the Spirit. Let us also walk in the Spirit. You, you, you see what I'm saying? I mean, the Bible is telling us. He said that the just shall live by faith. And the scripture there was saying that if we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. That means we our day-to-day -day life is based on being spiritually minded, not carly minded. <laughs> it said, let us not be desirous of vain glory. I talk about the fact is talking about when people sitting there trying to say, well, you know, uh, white superiority, or black superiority, or Mexican superiority, or, you know, ethnic group superiority. Superiority of who? Because the thing about it is God is superior. You're not, you're not, you're not a link. You're not a, there's no divide between me and God. You're not the, you're not a, a level between me and God. Whether you're black or white, whether you are a minister or not, you are not a, 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 a divider between me and God. God wants all of us to have a personal relationship with him. And we want to make sure we encourage that to one another. And like I said, that way he said, don't be desires of vain glory. See, what is, how much money you make, what color your skin, what position you have, all those things are things that are passing. They're not eternal. But what is eternal is life in Christ Jesus, connecting to God, being led by the Holy Spirit. That is 
what is eternal. That is what is profitable. That's why we want to focus on that. So, so look at it again. Verse 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Because nobody want to hang around the works of the flesh. Let's look at the works of the flesh. Verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery. Now, somebody's in to say, okay, look at, let's, let's read them. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, immolation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresy, envy, murder, drunkenness, reveling, and such life, of which I tell you before, as I told you in past, time past, the day to do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The point of this is that a lot of these characteristics, I don't think none of y'all want to be around. I know you don't. You know you don't. You don't want to be, if you're married, you don't want adultery to happen in your marriage. Whether it's you or your spouse. You know you don't want that. You know you don't want that. So don't sit there and say, well, y'all being all religious. You don't want that in the flesh for somebody to commit adultery. You don't want that. Nobody wants it. It happens, but nobody wants it. It's not fun. Maybe it's fun to commit adultery until you get caught. Then you get in trouble, right? And even fornication, the fact is that most of us got into fornication growing up or, or was induced, you know, I mean, those in the 60s and the 70s, you know, with the sexual revolution, and now it's just still there all over the world. But the point is, even people who commit fornication don't want somebody to cheat on them. How many people have been killed because somebody cheated on them? How many people, you know, in other words, it's not a committed relationship. It's just sexual. And most people have problems with that. So if you're in fornication, one of the things about the Bible is talking about is <laughs> if you've been found sleeping with somebody, they want you to get married. I mean, that was, that was the Old Testament concerning that. If you found committing adultery, they stone you. They didn't stone you for fornication. They they made you get married. You will marry the person. That's that's it was shotgun wedding is what I'm trying to say, deal with fornication. But the other ones, you know, the uncleanness, you know, I mean, those are not characteristics you want to be around. Uh lasciviousness and then that's being lustful, you know, and here's idolatry, putting things above God. Someone's worship money. Someone's worship stadiums. Someone's worship buildings, property, uh, themselves. You know, idol, idolatry. You know, witchcraft. You know, I, I, I don't know. It's weird out there dealing with witches, but it's talking about dealing with with spirits. And Bible calls them unclean spirits. Now I know someone said, "Well, no, do the good." No, it's there's the Holy Spirit that matters. Regardless of whether somebody who deals with witchcraft think that no, we, we can deal with other things, but no, the Holy Spirit is what matters. And there's angels and the hosts of heaven that lines up with those who believe. And the person who don't like that, they need to understand is take it to him. Take it to him. Uh, hatred. Who wants to be around a hateful person? Who wants to be around a hateful person? Uh, uh, what's this? What's the other one here? Various, well, we gave definition of that, that just being unstable. Immolation is basically jealousy. Wrath. Who wants to be around people that's wrathful and angry and want to hurt somebody? Who want to hang around somebody that's always arguing and want to sit there and start a fight with somebody? Then you're drawn into the fight. If, they, if you're their friend, you, you're drawn into the fight yourself, right? Uh, we got sedition, just like in January the 6th, when people sit there and attack the Capitol. Uh, heresy is just false, bad doctrine. Here's envy again, right there in verse 21. Who who wants to be around somebody that's envious of you because of your success? And that's that's a lot of people have been killed because of envy. You know, even Jesus, Pontius Pilate recognized that they envied him. It was out of envy, envious. 
uh, murder. Well, you know, that's one of those final acts too, right? Who wants to be around somebody who's a murderer? You don't want to be a murderer. You know all the things and the connotation that goes along with it. It's, it's, not a, it's not a good place to be. And then it, it ends lives of people. You know, uh, drunkenness. You know, we, we laugh at people that's drunk, but we don't want to be drunk ourselves. But that's the work for the flesh. Reveling in like wild parties and stuff like that, you know, uh, orgies and stuff like that. I mean, I get you, people that are very possessive does not want to see you. And I see in movies, a lot of movies in this show that people even get us something like orgies and stuff. They'd be like, uh, no, the attention need to be toward me, not not so and so. The pleasing should be with so and so, not not you. You know what I mean? This, we said these things are fun, but in reality, most of us don't like it. When special is done towards you. But how can you sit there and endorse it, but get angry when it when it when it impact, impacts you? Any of those things you're talking about with the work of the flesh. None of us want it done to us. And you obviously don't want nobody to have no murder on us. <laughs> that's a that's an end game, right? Game over. But I'm talking about these other things too, the raps, is this shit, you know. The envy, the strife, all those type of things. Really, that, that I don't, I don't see no fun in it. Never you. I mean, you should, if you want to go to uh, all the fighting, that's that's control. Meaning it doesn't get out of hand, right? Playing football, that's control. There's there's penalties for people who operate outside the rules of the game. Same thing with baseball and anything else, right? We 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 want to be in a controlled environment, and that's part of the fruits of the spirit as well right so so the thing is that we want to be led by the spirit of god verse 18 said but if you be led of the spirit then you're not under the law now the works of the flesh are manifest I meaning these are the things that's under the law that we just read but the fruits of the spirit the ones we read in the in the uh, verse 22 to 23 these are the things that come from the Spirit of God. Now, I'm saying that we can at least be able to operate in the Spirit of God and, and try to fellowship one another. Because we were talking about that day, too. Is a lot of cases, we don't want to be, we don't want to focus on uh, living the things of God outside of the four walls of the building. We, the enemy, is successful in basically telling us that we're supposed to uh not get involved and 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 keep the church in the church building but you be in the world i want you to operate in the world that's what it that's what the enemy wants we're supposed to be spiritually minded and here's the thing in romans 8 1 through 11 it says there's therefore no condemnation to them which are in christ jesus who walk now the first path to the spirit for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak to the flesh, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk what? Not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That's what I'm saying to say you, but I'm just encouraging us, this is to start walking after the spirit. And stop letting people drag us back into the flesh. A lot of people want to drag us back into the flesh because that's where they want you to be mentally. What God is saying, I want you to be spiritually. Verse 5, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the cardinal mind is enmity against God, who is not subject to the law of God, neither deep can be. So then they that are the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, what? The body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, make alive your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Amen? 
So we, we when we talk about the fact is being living life spiritually is not separating yourself from the world, but operating in a spiritual thing. What does the Lord say? What does He want us to do? Where does He want us to go? Just start focusing. You know what I mean? Just start focusing in that direction. Just start. Just start allowing ourselves to trust in who God wants us to be instead of trusting in, 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 in what we want to be. <laughs> I think that's what's critical. And that's why we said you, we, we should fellowship spouse and husband. And it's not about whether you're a preacher or whether she's a preacher. It's about just being you as two individuals, studying the word of God and fellowship and raising your children. Because once you get old, it's too late to a degree. Unless they want to hear the word of God and study the word of God with you, right? We have to start living beyond the walls. We have to start living spiritually minded in the walls of the building, of the sanctuary, of the ministry. And then as we live our life, day to day, we live our life being spiritual minded. You don't have to, you, it's not being deep. You sit there, as far as you're concerned is, God is with me in my job. God is with me in my family. God is with me when I'm alone through Jesus Christ and the leading of the Holy Spirit. You know what I mean? That's, that's what he's trying to get us to do. It's not, listen this, it's not confined to the four walls. It's not confined to the four walls. It is not confined to the four walls. You can be a Christian, live as a Christian, without sitting there getting so deep that you 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 can't even you you forget. Time you walk out of the building, time you walk out of a Zoom meeting, you forget that God is with you, and that He's a it's a spiritual thing. So when we talk about this morning, 